Hi, so this is the fourth and final part of the director's guide from treatment to delivery on the YouTube commercial made for you. Um, we'll be going to more technical specifications and it's going to be like a collaborative approach, myself and my gaffer, who's going to be like co-chairing in the technical specification on the exact fixtures and designs and levels and why we get to like talk about the conversations and everything that led to the final output of the frame. Without further ado, let's hit it. This was about around eight in the morning and this that you have here, this that you have here was not actually the sun because we had like an overcast day. So we had to like use a interesting source, which my gaffer collaborated details on that, that was actually pushing um, from behind her, that was actually sending in to actually hit the wall. And we had another key light that was coming in to create this wrap you get that was actually like lighting the whole of the face here and this was very useful to us because it gave us like the entire big catch lights and everything that was actually coming up to create a little bit of um, interest there was like a different source that we had here and that actually helped in giving texture to the hair and um, bringing out the entire surface that was actually coming out. We did have some extra fill that was, um, if we actually get like, that came from this side, right? To just like raise up the levels because we are working on beauty in the beauty space. So that was the levels we were supposed to like um, bring up. It was not dramatic. So usually our contrast ratio would have gone really more darker, like a three to one or like a four to one. But that was not the case in this approach because most of it was like, feel good, average people, no classiness. Actually, they were a bit classy. Um, just making it a lot more decent, you get in the space of realism and relatability, you get. So if you even look at the wardrobe, the art design, nothing over the top these are not like the kind of people who would own a tesla but they're great average people relatable people that could um, fit into this universe that we're creating hence the entire elements you get the color codes around them we had like the flesh tones around the wall we had like the purple that to contrast to make the character pop out of the entire space we had like the dark fabric which you can see on the bed which um helped to like um, if you look at the bed bits here, that would enable us to be able to um, knock down where your eye interests go to when your eyes see the frame. So when you actually get to like see the move when it comes in, there's like a pull out comes in and you like get all this revealed but your eyes still get to like be stuck on the character with no power windows and all of this. This was like some of the things we were hoping to achieve when we were creating this frame, putting the person in a very contemporary, relatable, modern world that we could also relate to. And this is where my gaffer will now tell the exact fixtures and most of the behind the scenes that you will see. Over to him. Hello, my name is Omar Tayo. I'm a gaffer. This is the setup. Um, as you can see, the room is a highly room already. Um, so I need a strong key to come into this room. So first thing I do is I bring in my V flats with a 1.2 Nalox to create a strong source inside the room already. Um, so with that, and I do a 4x4 four four mass light um, to create a hedge for her, which separates her away from the wall. And as you can see, there's a floppy here. The floppy is trying to cover the escape bounce that's bouncing on the ceiling, which the base boy is holding. Behind the base boy, as you can see, um, there's a Frozer 500 behind him with a 36 degree lens in front of it. That is what assimilates the gobo that you can see in the main frame. As you can see, um, there's another one foot light in front of it, one foot with full grid in front of it, a one foot mass light with full grid in front of it, just to create the beauty of her beside the phone, which is on this other side of it. As you can see, there's a small top light of like a one, two foot light on top of her, which creates the hedge over away from the wall and as you can notice there's a lamp here which is just just a 32 kelvin bulb it's inside the light and the particle lamp so far so good this is how we achieve this thing that you see here um now this one was already done at the end of the day and this was like the 24th hour because we had like a 6 a.m call time and we were at about 6 a.m that was like 24 i actually said it was 18 in my other episodes 
but yeah, 25. Sorry, my math was bad. This was just a simple um, setup that we had to do because we were actually pushing using the shares to be able to create diffusion, but there was like an extra um, diffusion that was outside that was actually bringing in the light levels, that was bringing the levels that we actually used to key um, the talent. We had like an M40 that was coming in from it that I pushed into like an Opal source. So we had like another Opal that was actually um, um, creating like a diffusion that before it actually now lit the entire shares so we had like a double layer kind of situation of diffusion that happened uh, with the um, entire scenario and this actually now um, landed on his face so we had the shares bungeed up to be able to create um, varying texture of light to simulate the presence of the and how light scatters due to the intense um, quality. Something we could have done right though was if we had, there's this new ultra bounce um, that's created by a company, I've forgotten their name, but they have like these layers of the blue in the sky, the green in the grass or the concrete jungles, just like different, but it's like an ultra bounce. So when you bounce into that, it almost feels like what will happen in the sky because the sky has like some interest of cold light, concrete, you'd have like your gray tinted with some kind of brown. Then if you have foliage, you have like green and that would give us like some kind of cool reflections. That would be something I would have loved to experiment, but not something that would afford it. Because what that would have led to would be somewhere around the top of his face around here, you probably see like that kind of blue, the bluish um, reflection with some neutral tones and maybe some green in the shadows. And that's how that would have played out in this, but not in this case though, but this was just like a straight quick close-up for like some quick shots. You can see some of the hard patches coming into the face if you actually get to look at um, this frame where you actually get to see it here, it's creeping up there, you get to see it, um, how it creeps up um, to some of these chicks. Those are like leaks when he like goes in and out and helps sell the believability of um, this was shot in there and it was more interesting because it was a medium shot so there was not really much to do there's like another bounce coming in that was like taking the entire feel that we got from what we had already and that was like kicking it back into his shadow side you get to be able to lift up the level so you don't have like this kind of stack contracts fall you get on um, the next shot so for this shot um, this was now more of the interesting ones whereby we had to create like this kind of urban environment, like cool kid spot, you get not like the um, loudest of um, luxuriousness, but just cool enough. And it was like a mixed temperature light Kelvinish. And we had to build like a huge wall of wrap that would actually like create like this entire um, big wrap space that would actually like cover him here. So for that, we had to like um, create like larger sources that would actually come in from um, the side of the frame that would actually um, you see from the hind of his ears to the front is front of the eye side even to like an extra frontal um, from under the chin to just like create all of this you get and in contrast we had to like connect um, this other tone that was coming in from um, the uh, background right and have that same tone connect to like him here and this would actually um, create the illusion of he's within the same environment he's probably lit by some kind of large um, practical tungsten sauce that is probably probably a big lamp or some kind of chandelier that's come from like a top mimicking directionality contrast with some um, cyan tones that's actually giving all this steel blue coldness that's now giving the pollution you can see in the skin from the other side of the frame and all of this would give um, not technically pull up the entire skin tone but give way to like uh, a whole new space for some neutrality whereby some of the skin tones to get like coming clean and clear like you can see here and it's like not obviously um, distracting from everything that's there you get but also um, paying um, true intent so this was a bit more stylized than usual allowing the shadows fall into like the four stops you get like you can see or here like going really stuck deep into the shadows there and more creamy and saucy on the um, on the other side of the frame so all of this is what happened here and 
it was quite fun and interesting to be able to like put this together. Yeah, um, as you can see, um, there's a big 4x4 four four mass light here, which is assimilating the two windows, which is the natural big daylight that comes from the window, which is the giant source. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit like a two feet mass light coming from the top, which is like the general ambience, which is the top light that's enhancing the guy. Um, there's another backlight behind him. You can see uh, a one foot mass light behind him which is what is edging the guy out of from the flower behind him. Uh, you can notice there's a corridor by the corner. This corridor is lit with uh, a cyan blue tube light. Tube light is put on a cyan blue. Yeah, you can see this is the feel on the main scene. On the next one. Now this was quite more fun because on this shot, uh, it was one of the ones we had brain fag. This was at about 6.30 in the day. We've already lost the sun. The sky horizons were gone because um, the sun wasn't somewhere. To give you an idea, um, the sun was somewhere here behind the building, right? And we had to make the sun look as though it's coming from here and coming from here. So we had fixtures here. That was on some kind of mega boom here. That's the mega boom that you can see in there. Um, pushing out some level and there's like another fixture job kicking out some level they were like nanlox bits but we also needed to be able to like kick some of those levels to create some kind of skip bounce right and there was something coming in from here um that was actually you can see it somewhere around the side of the face and there was another big sauce which is also creating this wrap as though illusions from here which is off the side of the screen you get like a very like a four by four source of the side of the screen that was actually now coming like to like bring that up here and with haze everything looks magical so a little bit of um interesting good bit of haze and it all comes out amazing and the shot ends up looking like um, a pushing reveal you get that you get like sim of the world and that was it for this bit and over to him now. Yeah, um, this is the toss scene. As you can see, it's a beautification scene. As you can see, there's a strong beam on the floor, which is a 1.2 nanos, um, nanolite. Um, the other window, there's a 720 nanolite there as well, which is the strong beam that's coming from the other side. As you can see, you can notice a little blue from this side, um, which is the skip bounce from this light that's bouncing on the floor with a mirror board. Um, as you can notice, the atmosphere is a little bit cloudy. That means there's a smoke machine around the corner that makes it look more beautiful. You can notice the guy standing on the other corner of this. The guy is holding a 4x4 four four mat light, which is the light that I used to wrap up their face. Now to the next shot. So we had like the whole um, slowly, vertically tilting up while he does all these bits and simultaneously he also goes to like check what's in the gas you get. This was, there was a take for it, you get where he checks this. But it never made it in, just a little bit of a vertical move that was actually now cropped based on the split screen edit you get was the one that actually made it in. So he was like watching from the tap and this was around 8 p.m. dead night already and everything was pitch black, like zero pitch black. And it was like, how do we get to do a lot of things that will sell this as like late morning? So we brought in some high fired power into the house. You get, this is where some of the big guns were began to roll in and part of light in the space was also create the ambience because literally when light comes, when the sun comes into a room, a lot of those skip bounce, skip from different corners, reflections, and actually create the entire believability of what actually um, a day ambience would be. And to be able to recreate that, right, some of those things we had to take into account. So um, one of the things was we, so we had like a six bulb maxi brute, right? And there are like six bulbs in it that was pushing through the window, right? That's what you're seeing there. On um, this wall here, if we go to this wall, hold up a bit. So we just like actually get this right. On uh, this wall here, that was not this light and it was not another light. We had like another window off screen, but that couldn't give us this hot sauce. So we actually um, had like a, Nanlux fixture that was actually on a um, 
on a 19 degree lens to be able to get that intensity we bladed in in to have like the square shaped and like nuked that entire corner so that we'll be able to get like this whole hotness that will create this key reflection on this side of his face that's giving us like the far side key and that be was was beginning to like sell the wrap and the believability of it then we had like a, a giant overhead of like a 600 watt that was um also coming into the space from um, the side of the room too but this time it was on another like um, mega boom arm and it actually came in to like give us like this entire wrap that's actually like layering the entire body here and that actually um, sells more of the fill to reduce the entire stack contrast ratio because if you look towards the camera there's a lot that's dark like when you actually look at the levels to even see more of it that was actually dark is when you see like what's happening here that would tell you like how dark the day was like that's how dark pitch dark it was so um bringing up those bounce and feel towards camera gave us like a lot of room to be able to now like okay put the camera at the dark side of the room and be able to like see from the darkness into the light and have these various light and contrast levels to be able to like achieve uh, most of this and this thing was just nice to create interest because um, the fact that we had um, this whole hot sauce in the frame here right the fact that we had that there what that did for us is that it enables um, whatever steam that came out of the pot to be able to create some kind of visual interest of haze and just made it a little bit more cool you get what we could have done better though was to probably add another layers of share in front of this cutting or something or probably a an opal diffusion in front of this window here to be able to like just um, roll off the highlight a little bit pleasantly so this is like hindsight because sometimes you review your works and see okay where did i take a bit a little bit of miss you get sometimes could be true crunch of time pressure or sometimes not even time to be able to like because this is a lot more better than you got the perfect shot but you could not complete the commercial you get so Complete work always trumps the perfect work. Perfection is the enemy of progress, but which is why you always go back, you optimize, look at where you made some mistakes and see how you can like push that for. So the, in this same kitchen, we split it up and lit this same scene. This was like the other side of the kitchen, which is like repurpose and recondition it. Um, my gaffer is going to like give you all the ones and zeros you get and fixtures and specification. But the same concept applied, which was bringing in a huge source from what we could see to sell the ambience part, which you can see that's happening with this window here. And um, maintaining what the skip bounce would do, what would happen in a day if that happened. If you look at here, you can see under her chin, somewhere around here. All those levels where they're coming from you can see another top level there too where it's also coming from if you look at towards um, uh, her right side there's like some hot reflection that's skipping off from the floor you get those is actually that's actually light source that's actually coming from um, um, a fixture that we had placed there that skipped off the floor and actually like um, create those kind of levels for us you get to be able to sell the illusion but this was a lot more frontal because we had like a huge push coming from directly the op opposite hand that was like that generated more of this um, environmental feel you get and this was what we did you get something that would have been interesting was if we were able to um, take down this front level maybe like a third of a stop down so it's not as prominent as it is that would have been like really great so so that we would like sell more of it to have been a lot more nicer um, this is just hindsight 2020 but that's a lot more of what happened um, within the show um, within the space and what I'd have loved though this is not may have not been possible but if we could have been able to get our department to probably install probably a tube or two on the decks where she's walking so we'll actually like have most of those um, shadows underneath the neck somewhere there like disappear that would have actually been amazing to be able to sort out and actually make work and the next bit that follows were the meals this was just simple because we all we had to do was just backlight them you get and that's how we got them same thing in this case backlighting them you get and like creating bounce wraps to be able to like fill in the shadows and that was great and this is how we set this kitchen scene up um from the window 
there's a seeds bulb from this window which is creating the daylight, the main daylight which is the source from this other side of the camera. As you can notice from this other window there's an M18 from there too and there's another 500 with a 16 degree lens in front of it. That is what is bounced on the wall that is bouncing back in front of the guy. And you can notice there's another source coming from up which, he, which means there's a mega boom arm there with a 4x4 four four mat lads. We move on to um, the other bit, which was, this was some of the footage we were already getting towards close the end of day, because we were already like, getting like, towards the end of day here. Uh, you can even see he was already tired from the yard. <laughs> yeah, so we had most of this coming. Uh, we had like a simple moves, right? This was a lot more, not as bland as this, but we had um, challenges with um, clearance of certain artworks that were placed there. You get like footballers' face, posters, all those things have to be cleared. You could run to serious copyright issues, you get, especially when you're working for a big grant. So we, didn't, we couldn't get clearance, hence that, because we had a situation whereby um, as a fan, what would a fan had? So they're like posters, you get, they were like things of interest, just like the treatment, you get some of those things, you get was actually in, in space, some of the things were on the decks, but that didn't get cleared, so we had to like take them all out. So note for self, stuff like this, make sure you get all your cleared image approved before arriving on set to avoid things that could cost the brand you're working for a multi-million dollar Naira suit based on infringement or wrong usage and stuff like that. So yeah, but this was the same. We had a key from a window that you could not see um, that came in to actually like um, bring up this bounce on the face. Uh, we had like a tube off screen that was actually like um, giving us this whole um, alternate look whereby you can see it's filling to the shadows that's under the chain. Then also like the window you could see, that just had like a fill, we had like a, fi a non light fixture that was coming in from that corner also to just give us like the crack of day, which you can see spilling into the lamp there and creating like the highlights that you can also see in the background. And this was all to sell the day ambience. This was around about um, 2 a.m. already in the morning and was just like paddling and peddling. Same thing, very quick shot. Took a little bit to move around to actually get to bear quite quick to when we actually got it done and we we're able to move up to the next setup which led us to this setup um, which was in the same space as the next two setups which was not that much same technique as the one with the guy by the window we had like the m40 pushing through to create like this hot so it, we we tried to um, do the, um, the light to be hard on the body but soft on the face. So the M40 was pushing in and we had like a sandwich diffusion to actually come in and um, cut some of the levers out you get. And you can actually see it that on the, um, on the body here, you can see how hot it is here. But on the um, face, you can see how soft it is. It gives this whole very mystic quality of light that it actually feels a lot more contemporary, edgy and interesting, you get. So it was like hard on the body, soft on the face, triple layer diffusion, and we're able to arrive at this, but we had more frontal feel to be able to fill into the shadows, just so there's like a sauce that was like coming toppy, not so much that it came in, um, which was light on the face, but we also had like our bounce cards to like take out most of the, um, lower the contrast on the underneath the chain to be able to actually give it the entire wrap that we see. So the fall off was a little bit more smooth and soft. So it went from like pretty hard to pretty soft and just wrapped beautifully in the shadows. Yeah, but same thing's happening here, but in a lot more lowered contrast ratio and with a lot more darker clothes so you get. But this time it's not like hard on body. We're actually now doing like a skip bounce. So the hard is coming from off screen off the window. So we have like a frame that's coming in, creating our key. There's a bounce on the floor that's being able to like um, skip bounce a little bit, but not as much as we can because we pulled out a wide. So the bounce was being moved as the camera went back on the dolly. But the hard sauce is coming overhead by skipping over her. And we just diffuse the one that's coming on her shoulder so it's not that hot to be able to like give this wrap. So it's almost like a skip bounce that we're using to like um, relight the situation with a subtle push from a larger sauce that's off screen. And that's how I believe we lit this. 
We've gone through most of the shots and this is how we have lit some of them. I hope this was interesting and more fun for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If there's anything I skipped, please forgive me. I know it was not deliberate. And I would look forward to seeing you in the next video that we create with the hopes that we get to keep improving on the things we share and they're valuable to you. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and also the notification bell. Until next time I see you, improvise, adapt and overcome. Thank you.